I'm here with Luke Crate. I'm Jennifer Winger, and we're here with the amazing Tim Minear, uh, producer of American Horror Story and my all-time favorite, Firefly. Ah! <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to be here sure. with us. Great, so I have just a few questions for you. Let's hear them. <laughs> okay, so you created Firefly with Joss Whedon. Well, I worked for Joss and I was involved with Firefly. Yes, and what was that process like building that world that so many people love? Well, Joss uh, directed and wrote the pilot while I was running Angel for him. And uh, he would show me, um, he would screen the pilot for me and ask for my notes. and. I didn't even think for a second I would get to work on that show. And then eventually at some point he came down to Paramount where I was directing Angel and uh, offered me a spaceship and said, do you want to come fly my spaceship? And I said, yes, I want to come fly your spaceship. Do you have a favorite line or a favorite plot story? Um, interesting. Um, well, I'm partial to Out of Gas, not just because I wrote it, but because um, it's it's very contained and it's really about uh, our characters and and I love I love backstory. But there's a there's a moment in that episode where Mal and Wash are on the bridge fighting, and Mal is telling Wash you have to somehow boost the distress signal. And so there's some gobbledygook in there about you have to divert the navsats to the blah blah. Um, and I was quite proud of those lines because. They meant nothing, but you had to understand the nothing that they meant in order for the joke, well, maybe I should do that then, would actually work, and it did. Is there anything that actually made it into Firefly that you were kind of not happy that it made the cut? Um, well, there was a giant tinfoil-covered whorehouse, but we went back and actually shot some pickup scenes of the crew walking toward the giant tinfoil covered whorehouse saying, that's a giant tin co tin foil covered whorehouse. Uh, to sort of cover the fact that it was a giant tin foil covered whorehouse. Yeah, so yeah. you wish you could have polished that up a little? Well, yeah, it was pretty shiny already, but yeah. <laughs> and my personal question, I have always been curious since I saw uh, the coming to life of this character, Saffron, is that based on a real woman? Is there really that kind of spitfire amazing woman that exists? It's based on the woman of Joss's imagination. <laughs> I mean, I mean that Saffron in many ways is um, sort of an amalgamation of, uh, I think the kind of um, the kind of screen female that Joss loves. Yeah. You know, tough, funny, beautiful, smarter than every man in the room, uh, able to you know land a punch. Um, so I, I, I really think that's where she comes from. And I'm sure that there are, are women like that. You've been in many different chairs, writer, producer, director. Is there one that you favor the most that you're more passionate about? Well, I mean, the thing that's great about television is that the writer is the producer, can be the director. I mean, writers writers run television in a way that they don't movies or you know other, other mediums. Um, so I guess, it sort of begins with with the writing, and um, that's probably the thing that I uh, that I hate and love the most. I hate doing it. I love having done it. Uh, you produce American Horror Story, yeah. which is just a mega hit. It's amazing. I'm in love with it. Everybody seems to be pretty much in love with it. Um, your executive producer, could you tell our looters at home exactly what an executive producer does? Oh, produces in an executive fashion. <laughs> No, an, an executive producer is, uh, it, the, the producer titles in movies and TV don't necessarily mean anything. In television, the executive producer is sort of the head writer, um, generally. But in television, we do everything. We cast the show. We're involved with the sets and the, um, you know, the cuts. And, you know, you, you really are making the show from start to finish, which is why television is such a great place. Uh, for a filmmaker, for for a writer, really, because you're not thrown out of the process. Uh, yeah. You oversee the whole thing from beginning to end. So, what do you think the greatest horror story ever written is? I mean, I've always been a Stephen King fan. Oh, I grew me up too. with Stephen King. I mean, my some of my fondest memories of reading as a kid uh, was the summer that I read Salem's Lot, yeah. which is still an amazing book. And then The Shining, just unbelievably scary. Um, what is your biggest fear? My bigger fear? Mm -hmm. Uh, being interviewed. <laughs> no way, you're so good at it. Uh, no, my biggest fear is, um, you know, I mean, I have the same fears that anyone has. 
I'm afraid of uh, I'm afraid of uh, being discovered to be a fraud. Uh, I'm afraid of um, missing a deadline. I'm afraid of showing up to school without my pants. I mean, all those things. <laughs> look, look for the no pants episode. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Other than American Horror Story, what is your favorite show on television? Oh right my now? God, my favorite show on television right now is The Americans. Really? Yeah. I love Carrie Russell. I haven't yet saw an episode yet. It's fantastic. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Allison Wright. Who, who plays Martha on The Americans, uh, we cast in, I'm doing a show now called Feud. I'm very excited about that. Which is the story of the feud between Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and the behind the scene, the making of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. And we cast uh, Allison Wright in Feud as Robert Ald the director Robert Aldrich's um, sort of Girl Friday. So I was pretty excited about that. I mean, I'm, I'm completely geeking out over, you know, Susan Sarandon and, of course, I know Jessica Lange. So I'm, I'm geeking out over them, but I'm really geeking out over Allison Wright. From the set of Firefly, we're always looking for something new that we haven't been told yet, and I know it's been a long time, but is there any little nugget you can give us that has never been heard before? The very last day of shooting was some pickups for a couple of episodes, uh, one of them being the aforementioned the crew walking toward the giant tinfoil covered whorehouse. When you look at that, the, the crew is walking on a very long lens and they're in front of a backdrop. It was all on the stage. Like I was, I was matching it to the location work. So we shot that and then we shot some interior scenes of people boarding up the whorehouse for the gunfight. Um, now this was not the last episode shot, but these were the last pickup shot to finish everything. So every character would go into this little swing set. And when I say swing set, I don't mean yeah, swing right. set. A swing set is a small set on the corner of a stage that gets put up quickly for some close shots. So each, char each actor would go into that set, do their two or three shots, and then the AD would say, that's a firefly wrap for whoever it was. For each character, for it each hurts my for each hear actor. You say that. Now, at the end of at the end of a day, what they might say is, um, uh, "That's a wrap on Nathan, right?" But a Firefly wrap meant they're done with Firefly. So suddenly, this set was becoming a death chamber. This was the last place. Once you went in there, when you came out, you were no longer on the show. Mm -hmm. So each person went in and did these things. That each person would come out and give sort of an impromptu speech to the crew about what the show had meant to them and um you know so ron would come out and he would give a speech and and, and etc until finally we were done and we were finished it was over and i drove home that night it was a friday i drove home that night i sat down in front of the television i turned it on and fox was finally airing the fucking pilot that night they wouldn't air it before, but now they were going to air it, and it was it was just a day full of uh, sadness and irony. This is just something that I hope for. Um, is there a second season that might possibly happen, or another film, or do you think that the story that you set out to tell is complete? No, it's certainly not complete. It's not even remotely complete. Um, but will there be another season of the show? You know, never say never, but probably never. If there's one thing that you could say to the Firefly fans, uh, what would it be? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, the Firefly fans, for a show that didn't even go a full season, um, they, and particularly the ones who were there from the beginning, who really supported us when we were on the air, took out ads in Variety, did everything they could to try to, you know, keep the show going for a full season. And the ones who came to the show, uh, years after, when I meet them at conventions or when I meet them online, um, they're just the greatest fans. So, so thanks for getting what we were doing. Well, thank you so much um, for stopping by. Sure. And it was such a pleasure. Good, I'm glad. Thanks, you guys.